that means YouTube let it go through. If not, that means I was flagged. The reason why I always say that is because um, y'all know how YouTube be bugging sometimes and um, they do that copyright mess and sometimes the, um, the clip will get deleted. So this is the story of the iconic soul R&B singer Diana Ross. Diana Ross was born on March 26, 1944, is an American singer and thespian. She rose to fame as the lead singer of the vocal group The Supremes, who became Motown's most successful act during the 1960s and one of the world's best-selling girl groups of all time. They remained the best charting female group in history, with a total of 12 number one hit singles on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, including Where Did I Love Go, Baby Love, Come See About Me, Stop In The Name Of Love, and Love Child. Following her departure from the Supremes in 1970, she embarked on a successful solo musical career with the release of her eponymous debut soul album and hit singles. Ain't No Mountain High Enough, her first solo U.S. number one hit, and Reach Out and Touch Somebody's Hand. Her second solo album, Everything Is Everything, 1970, spawned her first UK number one single, I'm Still Waiting. Diana continued her successful solo career by mounting elaborate, record-setting worldwide concert tours, starting in highly watched primetime TV specials and released hit albums such as Touch Me in the Morning in 1973, Mahogany in 1975, Diana Ross in 1976, and Diana in 1980, as well as her number one hit singles, Touch Me in the Morning, being from Mahogany. Do you know where you're going to love hang over and upside down, respectively? Endless Love, a 1981 duet with Lionel Richie, made her the female, the first female soul act with the most number one songs in the United States at the time. Her commercial success continued throughout the 80s and 90s with global hits, including I'm Coming Out, Why Do Fools Fall in Love, All of You, Chain Reaction, If We Hold On Together, and When You Tell Me That You Love Me. Diana has also achieved mainstream success and recognition as an actor. Her first role was her Golden Globe Award winning and Academy Award nominated portrayal of Billie Holiday in the film Lady Sings the Blues in 1972. She also recorded its soundtrack, which became her only solo album to reach number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 chart. She also starred in two other feature films, Mahogany in 1975 and The Wiz in 1978 and later appeared in the TV films Out of Darkness in 1994, for which she was nominated for a Golden Globe Award and double platinum in 1999. Diana was born in Detroit, Michigan. She was the second of six children born to Ernestine, who passed away on October 9, 1984, and Fred Ross Singh, who passed away on November 21, 2007. Her mother named her Diane, but the birth certificate was mistakenly filled out with the name Diana. Her family and friends in Detroit called her Diane all her life. She grew up with two sisters, Barbara and Rita, and three brothers, Arthur, Fred Jr., and Wilbert, also known as Chico. Her and her family resided at 635 Belmont Street in the north end section of Detroit, near Highland Park, Michigan, where her neighbor was Smokey Robinson. When Diana was seven, her mother contracted tuberculosis, causing her to become seriously ill. Diana's parents sent their children to live with Ernestine's parents, the Reverend of Bessemer Baptist Church and Mrs. William Moulton in Bessemer, Alabama. After her mother recovered, she and her siblings returned to Detroit. On her 14th birthday in 1958, her family relocated to the working class Brewster Douglas housing projects, settling on Antoine Street. Diana attended Cass Technical High School, a four-year college and preparatory magnet school in downtown Detroit. And aspiring to become a fashion designer, she took classes in clothing, design, millinery, pattern making, and tailoring. In the evenings and weekends, she also took modeling and cosmetology classes. She has written that Smokey Robinson loaned her the money required to attend these classes and participated in several other schools' extracurricular activities, including its swim team. In 1960, Hudson, a store in downtown Detroit, hired Diana as his first African-American bus girl. For extra income, she also provided petition services to her neighbors. Diana graduated Cass Tech in January 1962. When she was 15, she joined the Primates, the sister group of the male group called the Prime, after she had been brought to the attention of music manager Milton Jenkins by Prime's member Paul Williams. Among the other members of the Primates were Florence Ballard, the first group member hired by Jenkins, Mary Wilson, and Betty McLeod. Paul Williams, then girlfriend, after the Primates won a talent competition in 1960 in Windsor, Ontario, A&R executive and songwriter Robert Bateman invited them to audition for Motown Records. Later, following the success of her live performances at 
saw cops, and similar events. Diana approached William Smokey Robinson, her former neighbor, rumored to have been her former childhood boyfriend. But auditioning for Motown, he insisted that the group audition for him first. Smokey then agreed to bring the primates to Motown, on condition that they allow him and his group, the Miracles, to hire the primates guitarist Marv Tarquin, who had been discovered by Diana for an upcoming tour. Marv Tarquin ended up playing in Smokey's band for the next 30 plus years. In her autobiography, Secrets of a Sparrow, Diana wrote that she felt that this had been a fair trade. The primates later auditioned for Motown for various Motown executives. In Barry Gordy's autobiography, To Be Loved, Barry recalled that he had been heading to a business meeting when he happened to hear Diana singing, There Goes My Baby, and that Diana's voice stopped him in his tracks. He approached the group and asked them to perform it again. But after learning how young they were, Barry Gordy advised them to finish high school before trying to get signed by Motown. Undeterred, the group began coming to Motown hits, the USA headquarters every day, offering to provide extra help for Motown's recordings, often including hand claps and background vocals. That year, the group recorded two tracks for Blue Pine Records, with Diana Ross singing lead on one of them. During the group's early years, she served as his hairstylist, makeup artist, seamstress, and costume designer. In late 1960, having replaced Betty McGlown with Barbara Martin, the primates were allowed to record their own songs at Hitsville Studio many written by Smokey Robinson, who by then was vice president of Motown. Your Heart Belongs to Me and a breathtaking guy, Barry Two of composed songs for the trio, including Butter Popcorn featuring Florence Ballard on lead and Let Me Go the Right Way. While these songs were local hits, they weren't nationwide hits. January 1961, Barry agreed to sign the group on the condition that they changed their name. Songwriter and Motown secretary Jamie Bradford approached Florence Ballard, the only group member at the studio at the time, to pick out a new name for the group. Florence chose Supremes, reportedly because it was the only name on the list that didn't end with E-T-T-E at the end. Upon hearing the new name, the other members weren't impressed, with Diana telling Florence she feared the group would be mistaken for a male vocal group. There really was a male group called the Supremes. Barry signed the group under the new name on January 15, 1961. A year later, Barbara Martin left the group, reducing the quartet to a trio. In late 1963, the group had their first hit with When the Love Light Starts Shining Through His Eyes, peaking at number 23 on the Billboard Hot 100 pop chart. At the end of the year, Barry assigned Diana the role of the group's hit When the Love Light Starts Shining Through His Eyes, peaking at number 23 on the Billboard Hot 100 pop chart. At the end of the year, Barry assigned Diana the role of the group's lead singer. In June 1964, while on tour with Dick Clark's Cavalcade of Stars, the group scored their first number one hit with Where Did Our Love Go? Paving the way for unprecedented success. Between August 1964 and May 1967, Diana, Wilson, and Florence Ballard sang on 10 number one hit singles, all of which also made the UK top 40. The group had also become a hit with audiences both domestically and abroad, going on to become Motown's most successful vocal act throughout the 60s. Diana Ross began to dominate interviews with the media, answering questions aimed at Florence or Mary. She pushed for more pay than her colleagues. In 1965, she began using the name Diana from the mistake on her birth certificate, surprising Florence and Mary, who had only known her as Diane. Following significant issues with comportment, weight, and alcoholism, Florence Ballard was fired from the Supremes by Barry Gordy in 1965. 1967, hiring Cindy Bird's song from Patti LaBelle and the Blue Bells as Florence's replacement. Barry renamed the group Diana Ross and the Supremes, making it easier to charge a larger performance fee for a solo act star in a backing group, as it did for other renamed Motown acts. Barry initially considered having Diana leave the Supremes for a solo career in 1966, eventually changing his mind because he felt the group's success was still too significant for Diana to pursue a solo career. She remained with the group until early 1970. Barry drove Diana relentlessly throughout his period and due to anxiety arising from his demands of her, began suffering from anorexia nervosa. According to her autobiography, Secret Soul of Sparrow, during a 1967 performance in Boston, Massachusetts, Diana collapsed on stage and had to be hospitalized for it. In 1968, she began performing as a solo artist on television specials, including the Supremes' own specials such as TCB and GIT on Broadway, the Dinah Shore Show, and a Bob Hope special, among others. 
In May 1969, Barry decided Diana would leave the group by the end of that year, and she began recording her initial solo album that July. One of the first plans for her to establish her own solo career was to publicly introduce a new Motown recording act. Though she herself did not claim their discovery, Motown's publicity department credited Diana with having discovered the Jackson 5. Diana would introduce the group during several public events, including the Hollywood Palace. In November, she confirmed they split from the Supremes and Billboard. Diana's presumed first solo recording, Someday We'll Be Together, was on the Hot 100. It was also the final number one Billboard Hot 100 single of the 1960s. She made her final appearance with the Supremes at the Frontier Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada on January 14, 1970. In May 1970, she released her eponymous debut solo album, which included her signature songs, Reach Out and Touch Somebody's Hand and Ain't No Mountain High Enough, the latter becoming her first number one solo single. Follow-up albums, Everything Is Everything in 1970 and Surrender in 1971 came out shortly afterwards. In 1971, the ballad, I'm Still Waiting, became her first number one single in the UK. Later in 1971, she starred in her first solo television special, Diana, which included the Jackson 5. In 1971, Diana Ross began working on her first film, Lady Sings the Blues, 1972, which was loosely based on the biography of singer Billie Holiday. Despite some criticism of her taking the role, once the film opened in October 1972, she won critical acclaim for her performance in the film. Jazz critic Leonard Feather, a friend of Billie Holiday's, praised her for expertly capturing the essence of Lady Day. Her role in the film won her a Golden Globe Award and Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. The soundtrack to Lady Sings the Blues became just as successful, reaching number one on the Billboard 200, staying there for two weeks and selling two million copies. In November 1972, she sung the song When We Grow Up for the children's album Free to Be, You and Me. In 1973, Diana had her second number one hit in the U.S. with the ballad, Touch Me in the Morning. Later that year, Motown released Diana and Marvin, a duet with fellow label mate Marvin Gaye. The album became an international hit. Touring throughout 1973, she became the first entertainer in Japan's history to receive an invitation to the Imperial Palace for a private aud audience with the Empress Naga. In 1974, Diana became the first African-American woman to co-host the Academy Awards with John Houston, Burt Reynolds, and David Niven. In 1977, Motown acquired the film rights to the Broadway play, The Wiz, an African-American revamp of L. Frank Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. The film initially was to include the stage actors who had performed on the play, but the producer, Rob Cohen, couldn't garner the interest of any major Hollywood film studios. It wasn't until Diana convinced Cohen to cast her instead of Stephanie Mills, who portrayed Dorothy on Broadway as Dorothy, that Universal Pictures agreed to finance the project. This casting decision led to a change in the film script, in which Dorothy went from a schoolgirl to a school teacher. The role of the Scarecrow, also performed by someone else on stage, was eventually given to Michael Jackson. Diana and Michael had a modest dance hit with their recording for the film of Ease on Donna Road. The second duet actually has part of the ensemble of The Wiz, Brand New Day, found some success overseas. The film adaptation of The Wiz had been a $24 million project, but upon its October release in 1978, it earned only a little over $21 million at the box office. Though pre-release TV broadcast rights had been sold to CBS for over $10 million, the film produced a net loss of $10.4 million for Motown and Universal. At the time, it was the most expensive musical film ever made. The film's flop ended Diana's short career on the big screen and contributed to the Hollywood studio's reluctance to produce an all-black film project, which had become popular during the black exploitation era of the early to mid-70s for several years. In 1980, Diana Ross released her most successful album to date, Diana. It included the hits I'm Coming Out and Upside Down, the latter becoming her fifth chart-topping single in the U.S. She began negotiations to leave Motown at the end of 1980. After over 20 years with the label, Diana receives $250,000 as severance pay. RCA Records offered her a $20 million seven-year recording contract, which gave her complete production control of her albums. Before signing onto the label, she allegedly asked Barry Gordy if he could match RCA's offer. Barry Gordy stated that doing so was impossible. She then signed with RCA on May 20, 1981. At the time, she was music history's most expensive recording deal. In 1988, Diana chose not to renew her RCA contract and had been in talks with her former mentor, Barry Gordy, to return to Motown. 
when she learned the baby plans to sell Motown. She tried to advise him against the decision, though he ended up selling it to MCA Records in June of that year. Following the sale of the company, Diana was asked to return to the Motown label with the condition that she have shares in the company as a part owner. She accepted the offer. Okay, y'all. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and stay tuned for the second half of Miss Diana.